In this tutorial, we are really going to start building out our currency converter chat app here. And at this stage, we're just going to focus on setting up two slash commands. So the first one is going to be, so the first one is going to be XE, and that will contain our XE command. So for example, it'll be 10 AUD to EUR, and that will return a value. At this stage, it's not going to return a value though. It's just going to return the text that we use. So we know everything's working okay. The other XE command is going to also be our help. XE here and we just hit enter and that will return a help text cool now at this stage we've got the entire project set up and running on Google Cloud Console and we've also got the template script up on our Google Apps Script project so if you haven't got to this stage already and need to set up your project check out the link above or below in the description okay let's get cracking so there's a couple of changes that we need to make to these required functions. And let's just scroll down to this add to space function and on remove from space function. The text here for the messages isn't entirely helpful for us and not too explanatory for the chat app that we're going to install. So let's just make some changes to that now. So in our add to space, let's just change our message to, instead of thank you for adding me to the DM, we could say currency converter. bot added to dm full stop thanks and then we'll say we'll think the person who it's displayed for so comma thanks whoever installed it so for that case it would be me it would be scott so that would be just for a direct message so for a normal chat here so if we add we if we want to add the user to a space then we might want to change our language a little bit so we could say here currency converted added to so we'll just copy that and put that down here currency converter added to and that'll be the name of the space so if we go to chat here I've got some names of spaces currency converted chat app development um, and a couple of example ones goats are us is another space name so they will be the space names added to and that'll be the event space if it doesn't have an event space name it'll just say this chat now that's sort of helpful, but we probably want to give the user a bit of an instruction when they install the chat app each time to explain how to use the chat app. So let's do that quickly. We're going to put this in a global variable and let's just create a new GS file and we'll just call it currency globals. And our variable is going to be const because it won't change error instructions. So we're going to use this text in the case when there's an error that pops up to provide people more information to help them create a currency conversion or when they need a list of instructions. So let's use back ticks here to make our list and we'll say to make, make, to make a conversion and we'll put a colon in and we'll create a new line. Let's create another new line and come up. We'll say one type and we're going to use the little asterisk here to use markup language bold and we'll use our slash command so it's going to be slash xe and then close our bold again the next step is going to be select the amount to convert and three then we need to add in the origin, so the origin currency as a three letter code. And then four is going to be add a colon. Five would be the currency to convert to as a uh, three letter code cool and then let's make an example e.g let's italicize with the underscore here and go slash xe and we'll make an example that's fairly complete so we could say one comma zero 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 oops one comma zero 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 and we'll say dot zero zero for a cent so a thousand dollars usd to eur and then 
close that underscore here. Nice, so that's a fairly tight example. It shows that we can add in a comma. We're going to also make it with our validation that you can either add a comma or remove it, up to you. And then right next to it, we'll have USD colon EUR. Nice, that's a good example. Now let's also remind them, we can say, hey, you can always retrieve this help at any time by, by using the, and then we'll bold it again with uh, asterisk, slash XE dash help, close the bold, slash command. Okay, so a quick thing before we head in, why am I saying XE help instead of just slash help? Okay, let's go over to our chat here and let's head over to our Goats R Us example chat we used once before. If I type in slash help, let's see what happens. I've got these help commands from a whole bunch of apps that I could use to deploy help if I want to add them to a space. So if I've got more than one app in a space and I use help, then it could override it for some reason. So it's probably a good idea first to use xe-help or whatever your app is, dash help. And these people here probably should have done the same thing too. Slap their wrists. Let's head back to our uh, CodeGS. Nice. And let's just go up here and uh, create two new spaces. And we're going to do um, backslash n, backslash n to create a new line. And then we're just going to add a plus symbol and say error instructions here. That's added noise we also want to do that here so we'll say put a full stop in here and we'll say backslash n backslash n add a plus symbol error instructions one more time for here you know what let's just be cheeky and copy this because we're developers and good developers the lazy developers are here let's paste that in yep that's tidy and that's done. Cool. All right, so let's have, head down quickly to our on remove from space, bot remove from this. Still not entirely helpful. Let's change bot to currency converter bot. So just so we know, especially if we're in a space, we have multiple apps or bots in that space. We want to know which one we've removed. And this chat is fine here. Cool. All right, so all that part is done. Let's scroll up to the top. Okay, so let's modify our on message content here. So let's keep our console log because that's going to be helpful for us to troubleshoot should something inevitably go wrong. And we don't want to return anything globally on every single message. So let's just delete all of that for the time being. It doesn't matter if we're in a space or a direct message chat. We want to do the same thing here. Okay, so let's get our event message. So we can go const dot message. And we want to know what that is. Now we've run it a few times already, our script a few times already. So we should be able to get that from our executions log. So what we can do here is just click on our executions log and just click on message. And what we need is the event which is all of this text here and then we need the message event which is this bit here the message is going to be a text the last time we ever did this that was the logging so let's go have a look at that chat here yep said the logging and it did stuff no worries so we want message for the time being so we want that in our script message equals event dot message okay cool and now we need to invoke the slash commands here. So let's write it up first, then I can show you on the JSON where I'm finding this information. So let's say if, and then inside message, now we won't see it at the moment because we haven't invoked it in this script, but if we say if message dot slash commands, or command, sorry, and then curly braces, and here is the perfect opportunity to use the switch statement instead of an if statement. So let's just use it. And we will say message dot 
slash command, inside the slash command path or property is also going to have the command ID. And that command ID will be a number. So from one, two, three, four, etc. Okay, curly braces again, enter. Okay, and let's make our first case. So case, so if the message slash command ID is one, let's do something. And let's just make a note of it for our future cells. And so we'll say this one is going to be our XE slash command. And we want it to return. And in curly braces again, we want it to return some text. So text colon, and we're going to create a function here called attempt conversion. And inside that attempt conversion, we want to send the message dot text as an argument. Cool. So our next case is going to be case two. So if it finds case two in message slash command ID, that's going to be, so let's make a comment. It's going to be XE dot help. And let's return. And let's return another function again. So it's going to be text again. We're going to throw back to the message in chat. Uh, and let's make a function called conversion help. Nice. And now it seems like our chat app has turned into a cult converter. It's not. We're still working with currencies, I can guarantee it. Okay, cool. So let's make these functions and let's put these functions in a separate file. And let's just call them slash commands GS, just so we can keep everything neat and tidy. Cool. And we'll just make these very simple for the time being. And the first one was the uh, attempt conversion. And it was drawing in text and that's so that's going to be our parameter and our parameter and our argument over here was the message.text and we're just going to return for now uh, let's do back ticks again xe text is equal to double quotation marks and we'll say that's equal to the text that we get in. So we'll just spit it back. It'll say XE text equal to whatever we type in after our XE slash command. Bonza. Good. So this attempt conversion will be built out in the next couple of tutorials to one, test the validity of the currency conversion input and to make the currency conversion and return it back. But for now, this will do. And then the next one is going to be function conversion help and we are just going to return for now error instructions which is the global variable we created earlier over in our currency globals All right so let's hit save now hopefully we don't have any syntax errors what we need to do now is to head back over to our google cloud console so one of the fastest ways to get us there is going to our project settings and then we're going to just click on the project number okay so once we're in here we need to go to apis and services and then down to the enabled apis and services and scroll down to our google chat api Cool, and let's head over to configuration now. And now we'll scroll down until we get to the slash commands. And now we get to add in our slash commands. So add new slash command. And our first one is going to be XE. And the command ID is going to be one. So if you remember, if we go back to our script here and head back to editor, and then code GS, we've got the case here is going to be one. So that's the command ID, which matches this XE slash command that's going to appear. And for a description, it needs to be relatively short. So we'll just say convert currency. Bonza, let's hit save and add a new slash command. And this one is going to be our XE dash help. And the command ID two, let's double check that. So we've got the command ID will be two for XE help. Yes, that's what we want.
Our description is how to use currency converter. And let's select done. And now we have to save this for it to be activated. Now, the slash commands are now available, but we haven't deployed the text. So if I go back over to our script here, and if I type in our slash, you'll see our two new slash commands. But if I do, if I try and do anything with them, so if I go xe dash help, and enter, all it's doing is repeating you said XE help because that was a script we used before we just changed it. So we need to redeploy our script. So let's head back to our app script project and go up to deploy again, manage deployments, and we're going to hit this little pencil button to edit and create a new version. And this time around, uh, what should we call it? Added slash commands. That'll do. Hit deploy. Good eye and hit done. So let's go back to our chat now and if we hadn't made any mistakes we should be okay. So the first one was our XE one. So XE. Now XE requires us to type in something before it returns. So XE and we'll say um, there you are. Something easy. And see if it returns. Yep so it returned back XE equals our slash command hey -ya. Cool. So if we go back to our script and head to our slash commands here, that's what we typed in here. XE text equals, and then that was the hey that came in there. Before we continue on, let's just go over to our executions and have a look at the return JSON. And if we can find messages here, there's our messages now. And we can see here we've got slash command as well. So slash command has now appeared in our messages because it's being used and invoked. And the command ID was one. And the display name of our bot was currency converter YouTube. And then we've got our command name here. Awesome. And the standard text down here was the slash command XE here. But we can also find up here that there's an argument text as well. So that excludes the slash command if you wanted to use that. It'll still give you the space but it'll also just give you the text without the slash command, which could be handy for you. Cool. All right, so that one works okay. Let's uh, test out our next one. So we've got XE dash help, hit enter. All right, so our XE help didn't require any inputs and it returns back our help text here, which is excellent. In the next tutorial, we are going to create a connector to the exchange rates API so we can grab our daily exchange rate data and grab a list of all the currencies in the exchange rate API. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button and hit subscribe and hit that notification bell to get a warning for when the next tutorial comes out. Until next time.